somebody tells me that my channel will soon have to break up with you guys because once the SpaceX Starship rocket becomes reliable, the updates surrounding it will be less attractive. But I can say with certainty that will never happen. By contrast, Starship's news will be getting hotter and hotter, typically this early year alone when SpaceX fired the public up by revealing its ambitious goals for this gigantic vehicle. And years later, there will be more insane things. Based on the analysis of my channel, I have recognized that my audience is very interested in the topic of catching Starship by Mechazilla, which is considered the main focus of the Starship 2024 project. So, if you've been looking forward to this topic for quite some time, stay tuned because we'll be discussing it in today's TechMap episode. At the International Aeronautics Conference in Baku on October 2023, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk revealed when would the Mechazilla catch returning super heavy boosters and starships for the first time. We would catch the booster in the next year, or maybe less than a year, and, and then hopefully, uh, if, if we get lucky, we might catch the ship towards the end of next year. If, where does the catch take place? Is it Willie Mays in the middle of the outfield over his shoulder, or is it Florida somewhere? Uh, no, it's, uh, the, 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 both the booster and the ship come back to the launch site. Okay, fantastic. There are many things to discuss here. Most notably, let's discuss Elon's timeline. When will Mechazilla conduct its first catch? The end of next year or late 2024, as Elon said. Fast forward to early this year, SpaceX's president, Gwynny Shotwell, also emphasized that 2024 would be the year that SpaceX focuses on Starship safety landing. But is it feasible? Their first step is a successful landing without Mechazilla in Flight 4. It explains why the upcoming flight should not have a payload aboard, allowing the company to focus on the urgent goal. The success of Flight 4 is very important because it will be straightforward to the next phase, catching both stages by the giant and most advanced structure, Mechazilla, this year. Um, I'd love to get Starship uh, into orbit, deploying satellites and recovered, both stages fully recovered, um, with a rapid turnaround on those stages as well. In addition to Flight 4's outcome, Another factor that decides the accurate timeline is the completion of the new structure of the launch complex. After three Starship rocket launches, SpaceX might be somewhat aware of what the current OLM design's disadvantages are. As a result, since March, we have witnessed the gradual removal of the OLM legs at LC-39A. The launch site, which had been sitting for almost a year with no activity, has had four of its six legs, which were to support the orbital launch mount, removed for unknown reasons. The legs that were to hold the orbital launch mount, which is more or less finished, were put up before SpaceX conducted the first flight of Starship in Texas. And when they found what happens when 33 Raptor engines fire at the ground with no water suppression system, the drastic design change raises doubt about the redesign of OLM serving for catching Starship this year. As mentioned, Elon also does not abandon the possibility of testing the Mechazilla in Florida, if the original design at Pad A took about a year to complete, this new design will take less time given SpaceX's current experience. It could be that SpaceX is going to incorporate a flame trench because water jackets aren't enough to protect the OLM from damage and the flame torch still wears the surface beneath slightly every launch. Additionally, the deluge plates made of steel tend to erode more easily and quickly. One given solution is shifting to tungsten. Could we make it? According to my wise audience, who is also our best friend, Kevin, tungsten is a lot harder to work with. It is very expensive. It is more than 10 times more expensive per pound than steel. Or another clever audience with the nickname Ken Smith. Tungsten would also require a stronger foundation, as tungsten plates would more than double the weight of the launch pad. Obviously, steel is still the best option. By the way, through this video, I also want to send my most sincere thanks to the audiences who have always loved and supported us in the past time, especially Kevin Bissett and Mo of the North. All of you always make my day. Okay, let's come back to our topic right now. Beyond that, we would imagine a new OLM design. Someone shared that, the same launch table, but with new legs and an inbuilt high pressure water-based suppression system, in addition to a rebuild of the already installed manifolds, to accommodate the inclusion of the very successful jet floor deluge at Starbase. Despite the hundreds of tons of water per second we've seen, it's still not enough to suppress the massive sonic shock reverb of 33 engines. 
SLS uses 550,000 gallons a minute to choke the solid rocket booster's sonic violence. And I would imagine that Starship being more powerful but less violent would probably need the same. The current six legs may be replaced with three new legs, meaning the launch mount might just need three legs to adapt to the new design of the launch table. This is probably because recent Starship flights have shown the SpaceX team the benefits of tripod design and the shortcomings of the current structure. Thus, researching and redrawing design drawings should be a compulsory requirement. In case SpaceX makes design changes, the original pads in Starbase will follow too. And everything will start at pad B in advance, which is under construction. On the other hand, some speculation suggests that this is simply a matter of removing excess padding. SpaceX began stacking the tower in June 2022 and finished in January 2023 with the attachment of the chopsticks meant to lift super heavy boosters and starships for integration before launch. They built the LC-39 a pad in a hurry, which may have been due to questions about whether the EPA and FWS would ever approve the Starship pad at Boca Chica. Once it became clear that approval was going to happen at Starbase, the LC-39A pad became redundant. Of course, the plan at some point is to build a pad there, but focusing their efforts on getting OM-1 and 2 up and running makes sense until Starship is operational. It now seems like Starship is where Falcon 9 was when it was first launched. It could take off, but can't land. This workhorse vehicle nailed its first ever test flight on June 4, 2010. At 2.45 p.m. local time, the rocket blasted off from the coastal launch pad at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. It reached an orbit 155 miles above Earth. Five years later, or on December 21, 2015, after two previous attempts, SpaceX successfully landed the first stage of its orbital class Falcon 9 rocket back on Earth for the first time. The historic landing is the first time a rocket has launched a payload into orbit and then returned safely. It's safe to say that instead of taking five years to launch a payload and land successfully as Falcon 9, Starship now can cut down the time much if everything goes to plan. This helps the Starship project quickly reach the break-even point and even the monopoly as well. While building competition in the medium to heavy launch market seems to be the theme of 2024, companies that can't find money elsewhere could be in trouble for never being sustainable. SpaceX's grip on the market isn't slipping and with revenue coming elsewhere, a few competitors probably won't slow them down from being able to one-up everyone with Starship. Because let's be honest, Everyone is attempting to catch up to SpaceX's Falcon 9 and heavy rockets. Yet, Starship is probably one or two more launches away from coming online commercially. While some will stick to smaller rockets, for various reasons if Starship can truly cut launch costs to a fraction of what they used to be, new rockets coming out today to compete with the Falcons will be looked on as obsolete in just a few years. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.